Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, each week on our entertainment show, we premiere a new TV series or movie that's debuting here in Ireland and the UK for this upcoming month. And up for discussion this week, it's the return of the classic TV series. Uh, just bring it on 20 years. Uh, not that 70s show, but very much... Uh, that show indeed is now that 90s show and we're delighted to be joined by one of the pioneers of that show he appeared in over 200 episodes in that 70s show playing the character red form and he's back for more 20 years on he's taken on the role of a grandfather now in terms of a father he's actually uh it's a girl that he has to is the apple of his eye. Eric has sort of left him with a, a daughter of, and uh, the Pinciatis and the Foremans are, are joined at the hip. And uh, so it's Leah Foreman plays Callie Habriardi, uh, the granddaughter of Red Foreman. Kitty Foreman is back with Deborah Joe Rupp, and we've many sort of guest stars as well. But our special guest this evening, it is the one and only Red Foreman. The co iconic catchphrase, dumbass, is back, and he's saying it. To another Kelso, it's just not Aston Custer this time. Uh, the one and only Kurtwood Smith. Uh, Kurtwood, an absolute pleasure to have you on the air with us this evening. And uh, are you enjoying Red Foreman again? I'm sorry? Are you enjoying being Red Foreman oh, again? Absolutely. It's, it was just a, uh, it's a dope, uh, just a delight to come back to that set looking so much like it did, you know, 20 years ago. And, uh, uh, and to be saying those great lines again, you know, telling people I'm going to put the, put my foot up their ass and various other things. Uh, so, yes, I was uh, I was very pleased to, to put Red's flannels on again, once again, you know. And Kurtwood, had you any sort of hesitations at first? I know sometimes with the reboots of series and remakes of series that you say don't touch a classic because uh, you might actually spoil its reputation or you might damage the original. Were you a bit hesitant at first? Did you need reassurances in terms of what this project was going to be about? Well, I think the reassurances were right there. Um, Tom Warner, who is, uh, you know, uh, Carsey Warner was the original production company of it. And Tom and Marcy Carsey uh, were both running the show again and we had two of the original creators of the show bonnie and terry turner who were going to be working on it and greg mettler who is now the showrunner he was one of the writers on that 70s show so we had all of those people at the top um, that were connected to the old show so i i really um, you know i was quite at ease about uh about putting it back on yeah and Kurtwood, I know actually Terry Turner, one of the co-creators of that 70s show, when he started filming that 90s show, I believe he actually started crying. He was so caught up with sort of nostalgia in terms of that, that he couldn't uh, hold himself in, in the whole emotion caught up with him. Yeah, that's right, you know, and I think he wasn't the only one, you know. I think there were a few other people on that floor uh, that were feeling very much the same way, myself included. Yeah. And Kurtwood, how is this, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde of, of the 70s be reunited with uh, Kitty, Deborah, Joe, you're up uh, after that sort of the chemistry that you had for so long, indeed over eight year, eight seasons of that 70s show. Was it just very much uh, being able, like a, a light switch, just having to flip a switch and you were back being the foreman once again? That's exactly right. It was, didn't even, we didn't even skip a beat. We just went right back to work. Um, you know, doing 200 episodes of something where, you know, Deborah Joe and I, I, I couldn't even begin to count how many scenes we actually played together during that time. Also, Deborah Joe and I, a couple of years ago, had done um, a pilot for another show. Uh, we were not the stars. Well, we were some of the stars of the show, but it was uh, based around a comedian, uh, uh, Nate Bardazzi. And... Uh, uh, it didn't get picked up, but it was it had been an opportunity for me to work with Deborah Joe again, and that was uh, just as much fun. 
And uh, I suppose Kurt Wood, uh, obviously there's a new young cast in the, that, that 90s show. We've Gwyn Rook, uh, we've Ashley Dynamire who plays Gwyn Rook, we've Mace Coronal who plays the younger Jay Kelsey, we've Ryan Dye who plays Ozzy, uh, So Morales who plays Nikki. But I'm just thinking as those young actors that come on, they probably see their predecessors, the likes of uh, Danny Masterson, Ashton Kutcher, uh, to for Grace, uh, all go on to do major sort of roles. Miley Coon is obviously world famous as well. Uh, there might be a bit of uh, was there any bit of daunting imitation by these young actors and actresses that they felt that they had to live up to the their predecessors? Dare I say? Well, you know uh, that's possible, but they certainly didn't behave like that. They uh, uh, there were there was not a hesitant one among them. You know they just. They just came to have fun and and make their own mark, and I really think they did. You know, I'm I'm very proud of the work that they did. Uh, Deborah Joe and I both had a great deal of fun working with them. And how was it good? Yeah, and Ashton, how, how was it good to have the likes of Ashton and Miley and uh, Topher make a guest appearance as well, Dur made a guest appearance as well, just to create that sort of further sort of link and sort of create those sort of backstories as well, to have them all guest appear for segments as well, and then let them off yeah. and do their own thing there, I said. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great having them back on the show, you know, for the limited time that they were there. I think Wilmer did. Uh, Wilmer did a, a couple of episodes, uh, but the others were only able to uh, to get by for one. You know, they've all been so successful since the show. Uh, you know, on other ventures, other shows, movies, and the like. And uh, you know, they're doing just great. Uh, but that means we can only get them back for a limited amount of time because they're. They're so busy. So it was great having them, though. I really enjoyed working with all of them. And obviously, there are other characters that are back in that uh, 90s show. We've Tommy Chong back with us. We have Don Stark uh, back with us that added so much uh, to the original series. And obviously, uh, we have one or two people, unfortunately, not with us uh, anymore. But to have uh, Tommy and Don back as well, uh, as well it must. Uh, there are pivotal success stories of that 70s show. To have them back in the 90s show must be very uh, enjoyable for yourself. Very enjoyable. It was good to see them. I hadn't really seen, I hadn't seen Tommy in a long time. Don, I've sort of, you know, kept contact with him at least as far as, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, not tweets, but texts and uh, emails and various other things. But, I hadn't seen Tommy in quite a while, so it was great fun seeing him again. And I suppose Kurtwood, that relationship between Red Foreman and Kelso, as we say in that 70s show, now there's a new sort of younger generation of a Kelso. Yeah. Is it very much the same type of a relationship that you had in the previous sort of series, uh, just to maybe skipping a generation as such? Well, I think so. We, I, I didn't really have a great deal to do with Mace. Uh, Mace plays uh, 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 the young Kelso. Uh, uh, on this, this, uh, you know, this particular season, but I'm sure we will have more. You know, it wasn't really, I think I kind of met him at the end, my, our characters met at the end of the first episode, but then I didn't see too much of him as it went along. But we will definitely be seeing more of them, if, assuming that the show goes forward. Which and, tell, oh. and tell me, Kurtwood, uh, what's the role uh, is it Red Foreman plays now in this series? Is he more gone from a provider rather than being a, a, a granddad, a, a sort of caretaker as such? Is, is he not the breadwinner that he was back in that 70s show? Well, he is retired, uh, and uh, but uh, you know, so he, he he spends a lot more time at home. Uh, he is. We see as it goes along that he's maybe a little bit more mellow than he was before. But you know, he's still um, he's still ready to spring those dumbasses any any time he gets a chance. You know? And Kurtwood, I suppose, in terms of bringing it forward. Uh, 
20 years. So you've kept some of the, the original props from the original set. You've sort of shifted them around to give the feel that it's still that same house. But obviously there's been different twerks, obviously, uh, be given that it's the sort of 90s and such. So was it important to get that feel of that old sort of set to give some uh, credibility of it being uh, the house of uh, the foreman's? Oh yeah, I think that you know the. Uh, I think that the the changes that have been made. Some of the furniture has changed in the living room. Some of that furniture got sent down to the basement, and uh, apparently uh, Deborah Joe tells me there's been a lot of changes in the kitchen, but uh, I'm not real sure about that. You know, that's that's her domain. Uh, so there have been some minor, what I would consider relatively minor changes, because when we walked on that set, it was just like coming home. And Kurtwood, I know there's uh, 10 seasons uh, in episode in season one as uh, sort of such. And uh, there was it a long shoot uh, in terms of shooting uh, film uh, season one uh, in terms of its production? Um, no, it was, it, you know, we uh, when we did the uh, 70s show, we used to do like uh, 25 episodes a, uh, a, a season. So doing 10, it just seemed like we got started and boom, it was over. And uh, Kurtwood Smith, uh, obviously, uh, it's a busy time for you with all the projects in the pipeline with the industry back to normal. Have you anything in the pipeline that we might be coming our way here in Ireland in 2023, apart from that 70 show for our that you might be able to talk about? Well, there's a show called uh, The Dropout. Uh that uh, that has already played here. It's uh, you know it's one of those uh, uh, limited series. I think there's like uh, maybe six or seven episodes, um, and uh, it's uh, based on a true story about a young woman um, who uh, got herself in a lot of trouble. Uh, but it was um, a very successful show, and I would hope it would play over in Ireland, but I I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, and Kurtwood Smith, I know uh, traveling to Ireland is on your bucket list in the near future. I'm sorry. I know traveling to Ireland is one of those uh, things that you have on your bucket list in the near future. It's definitely on my bucket list, and in fact, it's very, very close to the top. So I'm hoping to get, I'm hoping to get to Ireland in the next couple of years. And uh, one last, last second, last question for you, uh, Kurtwood. Uh, in terms of, uh, I know you've been in many TV series uh, throughout the years, throughout the decades, but one uh, caught my eye back in the 1980s. You were with uh, George Prepard, Mr. T and Dirk Benedict. Uh, in the A-team, you played uh, a villainous sort of role in that. And uh, what was it like interacting with uh, George Prepard and Mr. T? Oh, it was great fun. George Papard, he was uh, uh, he was a real character. Um, I remember I sat around one afternoon uh, 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 just chatting with him, and that was a lot of fun. Of course, Mr. T, <laughs> Mr. T was uh, a gentleman all by himself. He was he was a great fellow. Um, still is, as far as I know, and. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun, as I mentioned uh, earlier. When they changed the ending, uh, my character was supposed to have been killed in an airplane crash into the side of the mountain. But then, when it came on TV, uh, they had apparently changed their mind because it showed a couple of people scampering away from the uh, helicopter as it was in flames. So I guess for some reason they decided maybe they were going to bring us back and never had a chance. I don't know. That was kind and of a surprise. And Kurtwood Smith, finally, for the last 30 seconds, you might enlighten all our audience why they should tune in on channel Netflix UK here in Ireland to watch that 90 show. And uh, from Red Foreman himself, what's in store for them? A great deal of fun. Good laughs, lots of fun. Believe me, you'll enjoy it. And if you don't, I'll just have to put my foot up your ass. <laughs> on that note from the one and only uh, Red Foreman himself, Kurtwood Smith an absolute pleasure for me, Jim Conlon speaking to you on the airwaves uh, this evening a gentleman of the business a pioneer of the business it's great to see you reimburse that famous iconic role uh, you're doing a stand-up job as they say and keep the dumbasses coming but for the moment uh, Kurtwood Smith, an honour sir Take stay safe, take care and stay well 
Uh, thanks so much, James. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Kurtwood.